remember William McRae. He was the oldest resident we had here at the DI. And uh, he, he ended up here with us because he was living in the United States. And, but he didn't have citizenship down there, just citizenship here. So something happened down there and they told him he had to leave the country. He ended up back here. He had been living down there for like 30 years, 35 years, had a wife, kid, ended up back here and he couldn't go back to the States. And he had no family here. I mean, William when he got here was in his late 80s. So he had nobody here. What was interesting about William was in 19, he told me in 1965 he was the oil man of the year. And he told me, he told me that uh, he, he uh, built uh, nursing homes like the Glamorgan one and uh, sold it. Built a building downtown, a high rise building. So he was involved in a lot of things. He was a very interesting man to talk to. Now he used to come talk to me because uh, I was downstairs at an office on the first floor. I was very accessible. And he used to come in and say, you know, I don't have a lot of things that I can talk about with the people upstairs. And he said, I don't like watching a lot of television. You don't mind if I come down every once in a while and have a chat with you? Not at all, will you? You can come down any time you want. And of course, as he got older, uh, the, the, the signs of, of being older or aged start showing up because, you know, he'd have food on his coat. Uh, you know, he'd here be a mess, but it never bothered him. He was, I guess he was well beyond that. <laughs> And uh, so he gave me one day and he said, you know, I, I've, I used to go down to the racetrack a lot. He said, because uh, my family had race horses and we used to race the horses. He said, and one, one of our horses uh, ran a record here in Calgary. And I, I couldn't tell you the name of the horse because I wasn't keeping that stuff in my memory. I was just listening to William and giving him an opportunity to share with me the things that were important in his life. So. He, taught, he asked me if I would take him down someday to the racetrack. I said, sure. I said, but we'll have to do it on Saturday. Oh, okay. So it was a big race coming up. Some horse was running and he was all excited about it. So I decided I'd take him down on a Saturday. So I told him I'd come down to the drop-in center. I'd pick him up and then we'd, we'd head down and uh, we'd watch the races. So I did that. When I, brought, when I, came, in, when I came and got him, we went down. Uh, we went in, we paid our entrance fee to get in, and he stopped and talked to some of the people that were standing there who were working in that venue. And he was telling him about his family having these horses that ran in here, and he told him, we used to own this certain horse that ran and, and the record. He said, you're that man? Well, the red carpet was out. Talk about being treated like royalty. Well, this man was, was, was a pretty good man in his day. You know, he was in the oil patch. He was responsible for, he told me, he was responsible for the mud that they now use to uh, put down in the well to help uh, bring the oil up and keep everything cool. And uh, he used to buy, buy uh, wells that were already finished because what he found out was there was wells out there that still had lots of uh, oil and, or gas in them they just needed another way to get it out, which he worked, worked on and found. So he was doing quite well for himself. Well, when William passed away, I wasn't working here at the time. And I got a call from Alan Facey, who, one of our directors here. He said, I just thought I'd call and let you know that William had passed away, because I knew that you, you know, he spent time with William. And how did I feel? I had two feelings on that. One was a feeling of gladness, because William told me one time, he said, don't get to be 89. He said, it's too old. But on the other hand, I lost a friend.